All right, so today I thought I'd do a quick video on an oil drip pan that I just picked up. So this is a, a pretty big one. It's 47 inches by 25 inches. As you can see, you can put a couple of oil catch cans on top of it. So if you're doing an oil change on something like a big transmission where the uh, oil pan is bigger than your catch pan and you know you're going to make a mess for whatever reason or if you've got to switch jugs because it's going to overfill you can have this here and uh, underneath the main pan and catch oil. That's one reason I bought it. The other reason is it's just a, it's a large volume of oil. So it's actually uh, 10 liters, which is two of these containers here. So take a look at it. It's a, a Lumax LX1715. If you do the math, it's uh, 10 liters. Filled to the brim, of course. So that's going to be a bit of a problem trying to get the fluid out of it without making a big mess. So you could use something like this vacuum pump here and slurp it out just using a, an air compressor and a hose. You could mop it up or do whatever you need to do. So uh, some people might buy these for arts and crafts, but even though it came in a gigantic box that could have hold, held like 50 of these things, it came pre-dented before they put it in the box which is nice and then it's got drip pan written on it so if you're going to try and make this into a chalkboard or something your chalkboard is going to say drip pan on it but that's okay it's uh, relatively flimsy so if you've got to push it around the floor you're not going to tear a leg muscle or anything like that so for equipment like this fork lift here you can lay it underneath and it's going to be underneath of your differential your engine your transmission and catch any of the drips out of it if you need to change a hydraulic hose, it's going to be a big mess, right? Even if you try to put the uh, caps on the hoses and the fittings, it's still going to pour out all over the place. So at least if you can have this underneath the, the hydraulic line, you got a chance of catching the oil before it ends up on the floor. Although I do recommend you keep a, a stock of brake fluid or brake uh, cleaner here. So I got a bunch of the non-chlorinated 313 down there, if you got your car in a showroom slash garage at your house in the driveway, concrete, whatever, you want to catch oil, again, it's going to cover your engine and your transmission drips. So that's pretty good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to cover. Yeah, if you're working on a big industrial engine or a highway tractor or something and you're changing a bank of filters, obviously you can have this on the floor underneath the row of filters and you can switch the filters out without getting any oil on the concrete. Saves you a bit of floor dry. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you do get some drips on the concrete, you can just use uh, the brake cleaner to clean it out. Otherwise, it's just going to sit kind of dark. Or you could use some solvent. I used to work at a garage where we did a lot of greasing of vehicles, like heavy equipment, and there'd be grease all over the floor by the end of the week. So then we would just uh, use uh, mineral spirits to clean the floor quickly at the end of the week to tidy that up. So I guess uh, that's about it. Again, like if you got a bunch of leaky cylinders, you could just tuck that underneath. I got a pizza pan underneath of the uh, hoist there right now. So anyway, hopefully you found that informative. Thank you for watching.